DIY Boomboxes in Texas. My name is Phil, your host, and I'm doing something a little bit different this week. I'm going to show you guys how to build your own Bluetooth only cooler. Bo build, ah, build, pardon me. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I, I want you guys to see what your first project would, would be like. If you've never built one before, I'm going to show you a really easy, easy project to do. It'll be your first build. It's a fun build to make, and um, it only consists of a few parts and a few tools. And I'm going to take you step by step in two videos because I don't want this video to be over an hour long. It's hard for me to process over an hour long videos. Of course, here's here's Duke the man of the hour. <laughs> Come on in, Duke. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you guys the components that you're going to use for this build first. So you can go out and uh, get those components first, and if that way you can. Rewind the video, go step by step with me, and uh, see what's involved in making this. Now, um, if you're, now if you're still not comfortable in making one yourself, that's fine. I, I actually sell these. As a matter of fact, this is for one of my clients, and that's why I decided to go ahead and do this video since I'm going to be doing this build today. Again, this is going to be a really simple build. It's going to be Bluetooth only. We're going to have uh, six and a half inch speakers on the side here, and we're going to put the switches and the voltmeter and USB port to the waterproof compartment right here. And I'm going to show you guys how to how to do all that. It's really, really simple. Okay, good. Do get out of the way. So let me show you what we're going to start with here. And again, I'm going to put a link to all these parts on the site. And um, these coolers here, you can get these coolers at Walmart or any sporting goods stores. I've even heard rumors that Dollar General sells these. And you can also order them online. And uh, so that'd be the way to go. It's Saturday morning, and Duke's in here with me. i got to deliver this tomorrow morning to a uh, customer. Actually, tomorrow after church, they're going to be meeting me to take possession of it. So I'm looking forward to uh, building this with you guys. I'm going to show you wire by wire, connection by connection. I'm not going to show you every hole. Like, I'm going to drill one side, and then you guys will see that, and I'll just drill the other one off, off camera. So we don't waste a whole lot of time watching me do the same thing. So basically, this is what we're going to start with. This is an igloo. Uh, it says 18 pack. I guess they I mean really 18 cans. I mean you're not going to get 18 packs of soda in here, or beer, or whatever your drink of choice might be. It's uh, not real big. Let's see here. The cooler stands about uh, 12 inches tall, and it's probably about 11 inches wide so it's almost a perfect cube and it has a handle on it and nice to carry around and once you put the components in it it's real light now unfortunately you cannot use this as a cooler again once you put the components and everything in here but these are not these are not really designed to be coolers that we're doing this is designed to go on top of your regular cooler and I'm gonna post a picture right here real quick and you can see the one I sent to Missouri uh, how this gentleman here has it on top of his regular igloo cooler to put his drinks in and how it matches really nice. You guys could actually get matching coolers. You could get the small one, then you could get the larger one to put your drinks and everything in and just strap this one to the top. So this is what we're going to start with and I'm going to show you guys how to take the lid off and how to take the handle off and everything for doing the drilling. So this is going to be our base and you can still use the cup holders and everything like that. And again this is going to be Bluetooth only but the nice thing about this is as your skills improve or you feel more comfortable, you can actually put a FM tuner unit in here. You saw me doing my other builds. And I haven't checked it yet, but I'm almost certain you can put a full-size car stereo in here. Now, I actually have a neighbor who wants me to do one with a CD player. So that's going to be coming up in a future build. But there shouldn't be any problem fitting a full-size uh, double uh, single-din car radio in there. And you can also get different types of speakers. So let me show you the speakers we're going to be putting in. This cooler, this is the ones you said we used before. These are the JVC 150 watt each uh, driven six and a half inch speakers. And they're 50 watts RMS. Now, when you're buying speakers, that's one thing you really got to look at for you guys. This is your first time in getting into audio stuff. The 150 watts is the maximum these speakers can handle. So that's not the, that's not the number you want to look at. The RMS number is what the speakers can normally handle. On, on regular, you know, constant play. That's about how much you're going to really get out of them. 
And 50 watts is uh, nothing to sneeze at. That's actually um, a pretty loud speaker. And this would be perfect for uh, you know, portable backyard applications, the pool, the river, the beach, uh, whatever, whatever you like. Because these, are, these coolers are waterproof. And I'm showing you how to make a waterproof cooler. So these are marine speakers. And again, you can get whatever speakers you like. In a future build, I'm actually trying out these 600-watt speakers that are actually 200 watts, 220 watts RMS. And we're putting a bigger amplifier in there. But uh, this is going to be what we're going to use for our speakers. And, of course, you've seen me use this before. This is going to be our amplifier right here. This is the... Now, this one says Mogu, but it's basically identical to the Droke, and uh, works just the same, has auxiliary input if you want to add the car radio on and off switch, you got a USB port you can plug in directly from your phone, and we got the 12 volt connector. Now let me show you two different ways that you can plug into that, because also, speaking of that, you have your battery right here, and this is the talent cell lithium ion battery. 12 volts. I'm going to show you guys a little something here real quick while I'm thinking about it. Now there's a way to make this really, really simple, and I'm going to show you how. What you could do is this battery comes with, I'm going to put this box away so you need it. It's a good idea to keep a trash can right here by your work desk and, or your work table or whatever. I, mean, I used to build these on my kitchen table. And that way you keep the mess down. These actually come with this Y cable. And it's got two male connections and a female connection. Now let me show you why this is cool. Now what I'm going to do to turn mine on and off is I'm going to put in a couple of switches. And that way you don't have to open the lid or anything to do anything. But if, if this is your first build and you don't even want to fool with the switches, check this out. All you have to do is take this Y cable plug one end right here to the battery, the other end will plug into your amplifier just like that. Is that cool or what? Now you can just leave this hooked up and you can just flip the switch here on the battery to turn it on and off. I mean, is that neat or what? I think that's really, really cool. You can see the amp is on, you're not hearing anything, you don't have any speakers hooked up to it. And then what you can do is your battery is going to come with this battery charger right here, but you want to charge your battery. And uh, if you don't have a voltmeter on there, that's another thing. With this setup, this, this is the easiest way you can do it. Now, I'm not going to do this because I want I like mine to move a little bit. But basically, this is all you need to hook it up. Just plug it in here, plug it in here, hook up your speakers. Boom, you're, re you're ready to go. And what's cool about this extra pigtail here is here's your battery charger. And it just plugs in just like that, and you can go ahead and plug it in, and now you're charging the battery just like that. I mean, look, look how easy this is. It's gonna, anybody can do this. This is so easy. So, and then all you have to do is just, of course, loosen these up and attach your speakers. Now, this is really cool, guys. If you've got some speakers just laying around and you want to make a Bluetooth speaker, you could just do this like this. You don't have to build a box or anything. I mean, there's your. There's your whole setup right there, a little temporary setup. You want to do a little backyard setup, like take your floor speakers out of the house and bring them outside. There you go. You're ready to go. Now, the little light here on the charger, I'll show you. The light is red when the battery is charging, and the light turns green when it's charged. So, it's very simple. Now, what we're gonna, I like to do is I like to have a voltage gauge hooked into mine. So it's going to be a little bit of a different setup. So let me show you how to do that. But again, I just want to show you guys how using these wide connectors you can do a really, really simple little setup. Another thing you could do is you could get one of these pigtails right here and you can plug it one in to here and run that to your feet, to your switch and then you can get another pigtail, they sell these in a five pack, and go ahead and plug that in right there. And I like to run this to a fuse first, then to the switch, and then from the switch, then get you another pigtail. 
and run it right here to hook it up. And you basically you would have it set up kind of like this with your switch right here and that way you can turn everything off with a switch. But we're going to do something again a little bit more elaborate, not, not too difficult though. What I have right here, this little nice little case, and we have two switches because one is going to be operating this little device right here. And it even comes with its own little crimp connectors. This is a voltage meter right here. The volt appears there. And then you got two USB ports to charge your phone. Is that cool or what? And when you close it to make it watertight, you can still read the voltage right there on your battery. And I like to install these because that way I keep up with what's going on with the battery. So basically that's all the um, that's all the components we're going to hook up. This is real simple. You're going to have two switches. You're going to have the USB and the voltage meter. And we're going to drill a hole and make that fit. And your amplifier here. And we're going to hook up some Velcro. And let me show you one more thing that I do now. You can either get the pigtails or you can order these little male connectors right here. Now, I don't know if you can see in the camera, they have a positive and negative right there, two screws, and you hook your two wires into there, and you plug that into your amplifier just like this. And of course, you can plug them into your battery just like that. So I'm going to use these. So that's basically the list of the components. We have, again, you can use the pigtails. I used to use these. They work perfectly fine, but you have to put wire nuts on the end of connect the wires here. It's a straight hookup, no wire nuts, and that's kind of why I prefer using those. And six of these cost about the same as ten of these. So we're going to go ahead and put this away. Now, again, there's going to be a few of the things you're going to need. So we're going to go through these parts as we go. Uh, we're going to need some Velcro. Um, I'll show you that real quick. You can buy this heavy duty Velcro like this, and it's about $11 for about 16 or 17 feet. Or if you want, want to buy that much, you can buy little small packs of Velcro for about $3. And it holds up to 5 pounds, which is more than enough for what, what you need to do here. And again, this is indoor outdoor Velcro, extremely strong, it'll hold 30 pounds. And we're going to put the Velcro on the bottom of the battery to hold the battery in place. And it's how we're going to attach the amplifier to the side of the wall. So let me go ahead and um, pause the camera here for a minute. And I'm going to get everything set up to drill our first hole. And um, we're going to go from there. So we'll see you in just a minute. Okay, everybody. We're back. And let me show you what I got going on right here. Uh, what I did was I went ahead and laid a towel down. So we can go ahead and um, start cutting our holes and everything. And uh, I went ahead and took the handles off. And let me raise this up just a little bit. And the, uh, put, took the lid off. And really, they just pop right off. There's nothing to it. And um, let's see, my, cam my camera acted up a little bit. So I don't know if I showed you guys how to measure for the speaker. So real quick, what I was going to show you is uh, just one more time. Now, forgive me if this if I'm showing you the same thing twice, but on the JVC speakers, and like I said, these are really cool speakers. They're very affordable. They're only $44 for the six and a halfs. And I recommend this size right here because it's a perfect size for this cooler. I was going to try eight inches, but that just really would be too big for this cooler. The six and a half is just a really comfortable size to use. And they come with this little template right here on the back which is really cool. Now other speaker manufacturers actually include a paper template, but what you want to do is cut this out and you're going to get a little nice little ring right here. And what you're going to do is put this on your cooler and line it up the way you want it. And I use a tape measure to make sure both sides are even and draw you a line on the inside diameter here. And we're going to use a jigsaw to cut it out. So let me show you what we're going to do here. Now the nice thing about these coolers is they have a seam right down here, right down the middle here. Let me camera see how you can see that. Okay, see the seam right here? So what we're going to do, is we're going to take our template. We're going to line it up about right here and try to get as close to the middle as possible. Remember, your handle's going to hang down just a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a measurement here. And we'll 
let's go from right there. And there we're at an inch and a quarter. And right here we're about one inch. So I'll come up just a little bit. That's an inch and a quarter to the bottom. And that's about an inch and a quarter. So that's pretty pretty square. And there's two little dots here top to bottom. And I'll try to go ahead and line those up on that seam so we're perfectly squared. And now you don't have to worry about this line being seen because the speaker is going to cut it, cut, cover it up and you're going to cut it out anyway. So go ahead and take your Sharpie and hold down your template and just real gently go around and there's your hole right there. And what I like to do is use this hole as our reference point. So we're going to go ahead and we'll go from the top notch right here. Actually, we'll go from right there, and we're exactly two inches to the line right there. So we'll go ahead and turn this over, and we'll go ahead and take our template, and we're going for the inside diameter here. So come down just a little bit, a little bit more, about right there, or about two inches. So now the speakers are almost exactly the same place. I mean, you might be off maybe a millimeter or two. That's, uh, <laughs> that's for you metric guys. But uh, you're going to be pretty close. Okay, go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and mark the other side here. And there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and I put this template away in a nice safe place because uh, this way we can use it again if you future build. All right, I'm going to bring the camera back just a little bit here. Just a hair so we can see what's going on here. Oh, we're low on battery power. I may have to go get some more batteries here. Now, what we need to do now is we need to drill a hole out for our jigsaw. So, now you can use any drill that you have. Let me show you here. Now, I have a heavy-duty half-inch porter cable. Now, I'm a big porter cable fan. These, these, these feel so good in your hand, nice and balanced. And I use this to drill my holes. And also, what I used to use, and I still use it for driving my screws, this little black and decker. Now, if this is you, you're going to be buying your first drill, this is a great, great little drill. It's only $40 at Home Depot or Lowe's, wherever you like to shop. Feels good in the hand, nice lithium 20 volts. Now, it's only going to spin about 650 RPM. So it's not a real fast drill, but the nice thing is it's not going to get away from you either. So that's what's really cool. It's got the forward reverse, and I use this for driving my screws. And I go ahead and use my heavy duty porter cable. Now, while I'm talking to you about batteries and stuff, let me go ahead and. Uh, cool thing is, I can keep it in the family. This is my porter cable jigsaw. And the nice thing about this is the same battery that fits the drill fits the jigsaw. So I actually bought this jigsaw with no battery. And so this is my. Okay. okay, ladies and gentlemen, we had a little glitch there with the camera. Uh, sorry that cut off so quickly. Uh, basically, what happened, my batteries went dead, <laughs> so I had to put new batteries in the camera. So let's try this again, because the cameras are, are gone dead twice on me already. All right, so here we go. All right, what we have here is, again, we have our Porter Cable Jigsaw, and works really, really good, feels good in the hand. I'll, now, you don't have to have something this fancy. Uh, my first jigsaw, I actually went down to a pawn shop and got one with a cord on it. Works perfectly fine. Works great. Uh, I do a lot of my cutting usually outside, so that's why I went ahead and got the, the, the cordless model. Plus, I love Porter Cable. It's just, I mean, I know you guys love DeWalt out there, and, and I love DeWalt too. Believe me, I got plenty of DeWalt hole saws and things like that. But when it comes to my power tools, I'm just a big Porter Cable fan. And one thing I did do is this metal plate here tends to scratch the metal and even the plastic. So what I did, I took some of the Velcro and actually glue, uh, attached it here so it feels like felt. Now this is the soft part of the Velcro so when it goes across there it's not going to cut into it. So that's what we got going on and let me go ahead and uh, show you guys here. We're going to go ahead and drill the holes first and then we're going to cut them out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move the camera 
and I don't want to have to stop the camera because I don't have too many edits. I already have enough as it is. So let me go ahead and move the camera back a little bit, and I hope you guys are enjoying this. And we're going to go ahead and raise it up here as high as it'll go. And uh, this is kind of fun. Like I said, this is an easy build. All right, that looks looks pretty good right there. Because what I'm going to do, um, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, I know you guys like watching Duke. I'm going to go ahead and put it in this cardboard box here, and that's going to catch all the all the shavings, and because this this foam here is going to go everywhere, and you're going to see that when we start doing that. Now I have two boxes. Now this is just a small box I got from U-Haul. You can get them from Home Depot or Walmart, and it works really, really good. And uh, I have another one that I use for, for cutting metal. And that one works really, really well. I believe this is a small box. Maybe it's a medium. I don't know. This box seems kind of big. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and find a drill bit real quick that we're going to use to make the hole for our, our drill bit. And I'm going to use a fairly large bit. This is a 7 16th, I believe. And uh, go ahead and uh, I'm going to start here in the corner. Don't want to start in the middle. You want to start towards the edge here so you can go ahead and just cut your hole out. If you start in the middle, you have to go all the way around and out to the edge. Let's see if I can raise this light up a little bit. And just start slowly. Now, my bit's starting to wander a little bit, so I've got this little center punch right here. And hopefully they'll help the bit start right on that point, right there. There we go. That doesn't take much. You see that foam going everywhere already? And we're just drilling the holes. Imagine we start cutting. So let's go ahead and do the other side since we already have our drill out. And we're going to go ahead and take our center punch and go ahead and set the hole there. Go ahead and this right on there. Ah, bit got stuck in the foam there. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and put my, my bit back in the little box and go ahead and clean the foam off. I wish I thought of this box earlier. Sure does make things a lot easier instead of having to do it outside. Especially if the weather's bad, you can't outside. Now what we're going to do is uh, I'll show you right here. I've got a box full of blades and bits and things. Now you don't want to use a wood blade because it is plastic. You want to use kind of a bi-metal blade. Like, now you don't want to use a fine, fine tooth blade, but like this one right here I've used before. So it's got little teeth a little bit wider apart. If you use a wood blade like this one right here. Let's see. Well, I can't get it out right now, but it'd be hard to cut the plastic. So get you a bimetal blade for your jigsaw for doing your cutting. Now, before we do cutting, I'm going to go ahead and put some hearing protection on, some eye protection. So I use these headphones, earphones right here. They work really great. Um, if you don't have access to these, you don't want to spend the money, which if you're going to do a lot of cutting and things, I rec really recommend these, especially. If you're going to be doing uh, metal boxes, which make a lot of noise, but if not, just regular earplugs will work just fine. So you want to go ahead and put those on. <clears throat> and I can't stress enough: safety glasses. This is your number one priority when you're drilling and cutting. You've got to put on your safety glasses. So, got my safety glasses on. Got my hearing protection on. And let me find out what I did with the the blade just now. Well, I don't know, so I have to get another blade. <laughs> I don't know where I set my blade down. Oh, come on now. Alright, let's see. Well, that should work. Try that one. It says 
clean wood. So, go ahead and, uh, whoa, hello. Go ahead and use your quick release here. And uh, put your blade in. Make sure it's locked. And go ahead and uh, just uh, put the pole in there and just take your time and follow the line. for me to make the cut here. drill this second hole because no reason for you guys to watch me drill two holes and um, I'll turn the camera back on once we get these two holes drilled and I'll be right back. Okay everybody we got the holes drilled and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my headphones off and my glasses and you can see it's uh, left a little bit of a jagged edge on the inside here so we're going to go ahead and take our, our knife and kind of trim that up a little bit uh, that's good. Got another little thing down here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to clean the inside out in just a minute. And uh, what you want to do is get you can get you a can of air, but it blows the stuff through. I just get an old paintbrush and uh, go ahead and a little curvicue off of there. I'm just going to dump it over here in my trash can and uh, try to get all this foam out of there. Like I said, this does make a big, big mess. So be prepared for that because this, my, my best friend George, he built the first cooler and he warned me about this. He said, man, make sure you do this outside because it, it makes a mess. Now what we're going to do before we start wiring it, we're going to get in here with our little shop vac and vacuum all this out. I was just trying to get the majority of it out. And you can see the nice thing is, see, we didn't scratch the surface with that uh, jigsaw being covered up like that. Okay, we're going to put this to the side. And uh, let's foam off of here. And now we're going to work on the lid. So, got a little towel right here. 
And uh, the rest of our holes are going to be right here on the top of the lid. So I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, piece off right here. You can see it just pops off. Makes it a lot easier to work. And uh, let me see if you guys can see that well on the camera. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay. So you guys are looking down. Now what I like to do is I like to go ahead and get me some uh, tape. Some painter's tape. Of course my painter's tape would go missing at a time like this. And I like to put tape down. That way if I, the drill bit misses or something, I don't scratch the surface. And also you can mark your lines and everything. Guys, especially if you guys are cutting these uh, with your Dremel, you're cutting out for your FM tuner right here. This, this is a must step because that the Dremel throws the hot plastic everywhere and it'll stick if you don't have the tape down. So this is just a really easy step. Now you want to use painter tape. You don't want to use duct tape because duct tape will leave a residue and painter's tape will not. So you could use masking tape. It, it'll do okay. I just find that painter's tape works a little bit better. Now it's, it's a little expensive. It's about five, six bucks a, a roll, but I think it's well worth the money. Okay, well what we need to do is we need to drill three holes right here on the top. So, oh by the way guys, I was going to tell you, um, now this is the setup for a lithium ion battery. Now, for you guys that want to use a lead acid battery, I'll show you guys in a future build a little adapter that you can put in here and this way you wouldn't have to open the lid to charge your lead acid battery. Now I prefer lithium ion batteries myself, but if you're going to use a car stereo in there or some guys want the real big batteries that last a long time on a charge, you can do that as well. So this is the lithium ion battery setup. So what we're going to do is go ahead and lay out what we're going to do. So this is the I'm going to put this right here in the middle for aesthetic reasons. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the little connector here, kind of as our uh, showing us where everything goes. So let's see what the halfway point is across here. So we're going from this point to this point. So we're at about an inch and a half. So an inch and a quarter would be the center point. And it looks like I'm just about right on. Wow. Well, I couldn't do that twice, could I? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hold this down. And I'm going to draw a nice little circle. Now, see, guys, that's the nice thing about that. And... Now what you could do, if you'd like, you could go ahead and use a compass and you can go ahead and set your compass for about the halfway point, about right there. And then what you could do is put your compass on the edge of the circle here, draw a line. Of course, I just broke the pencil lead, wouldn't that? Right on camera. Yeah, good going. And it's not going to come back up. You know, and that'll give you your center line basically. Well, I'm, that's so I use that compass in so long, but I got more pencil leads in so or just kind of eyeball it. That's what I do. I've been doing this so long I can kind of get an idea for the center of the circle right there. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and take my center punch. And I'm going to go ahead and punch out the hole right there. Now, there's two ways you can drill this out. Um, let me show you the first one here. Uh, let's see, this hole is going to be an inch and a quarter. So I actually have an inch and a quarter spade bit. And that'll work for plastic just fine because you don't want it to be any bigger than that but the, the, the spade bits do make a mess so what I suggest you do is use a hole saw if you can but a spade bit it'd be really difficult to try to get in here with a jigsaw it is possible 
or if you want to just kind of drill a series of small holes and then just kind of knock them out with a chisel, you could do that. That's very time consuming. But what I went ahead and did, so I do a lot of boxes, is I went ahead and got me a DeWalt, for you DeWalt fans, inch and a quarter inch hole saw. And the cool thing about this is this arbor right here will fit any cut any DeWalt hole saw you have down to an inch and a quarter. And I actually use this, I believe it's three and a three quarters. Let me see here. I use this three and three quarter inch hole saw for making my four inch holes in my metal. And the nice thing is this arbor also fits it. So once you have the arbor, and the arbor's fifteen dollars, everything else will fit just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and load this up in our drill here. Now it does take a half inch drill to do this. So again, you know, if you want to use a paddle bit, that will work perfectly fine too. It just makes a little bit more of a mess. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put our safety glasses on. And we're going to go ahead and line the bit up with our little divot right there. And what we're going to do though is I don't want to go through my table so what I think I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and mount this back on the toolbox here. I mean the toolbox, pardon me, the, the cooler. And uh, let me make sure the camera can see what I'm doing here. And we'll go ahead and that looks like it's lined up pretty good. And just when you're drilling plastic, go slow. This is not metal. So I'm actually going to switch my drill to the lower, slower setting. Because it's going to go through there really, really fast. And I have my clutch turned on, so let me go ahead and... No, it shouldn't. Now let me go ahead and get the... Now see, there's two layers here, as you can see. I went through the first layer, so I'm going to go ahead and put my drill in neutral and go ahead and get this piece off of there so I can go through the second one. So let me go ahead and get the little plastic off of there. There we go. Get some of the shavings. And let's go ahead and drill the second hole through there. Put it back in dry. And there we go. Perfect perfect hole. Alright, pop that out. And go ahead and put this back where it belongs. Alright, let's go ahead and take our brush here and get all the shavings out of our way. And I'm going to go ahead and check your fit. And look at that. Absolutely perfect. Dead center right where we want it. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a switch on either side just like that. And now again there's there's two ways you can do this. The hole here for the switch is actually 13 sixteenths. So again I don't know if I have a paddle bit that exact size. But what you could do is you could get one close in size and then just kind of take your knife and kind of scrape it out a little bit. And uh, Or you can actually go down to, let me see if I can, I don't have it here in front of me, but what's the name of that darn place? Um, Harbor Freight actually has a hole saw kit for about $18, which is good for wood and plastic. Now, it's not good for metal. It won't go through metal at all. So what I did, since I do a lot of metal boxes anyway, is I went ahead and invested in a 13 16 drill bit. Look at this 13, yeah, 13 16. Now it's a monster, but it does really, really well. And I'm going to drill a pilot hole for this just to make sure you get it started. But this will go through plastic like a hot knife through butter. So you have to put your drill on the slower setting or you'll get a lot of tear out because this thing is made for metal. But it works absolutely perfect. It was expensive. I think it was about $25, but I think it was well worth the money 
because I do so many holes, I drill so many holes. So let's go ahead and uh, find our tape measure here, and we're going to go ahead and kind of go halfway, I guess. So that's four and four and a quarter. So it'd be what two and an eight? Not right there. Go ahead and do the same thing here, but. Two and eight, something like that. And you just kind of eyeball it. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. I mean, like I said, you just kind of do it the way you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lift it up and kind of kind of eyeball it one more time where I want the switches. And just put a little, a little dot right there. And that looks pretty good. But because that drill bit is so big, I'm going to go ahead and put a smaller drill bit in there just to start it. So I'm going to go ahead and find a smaller bit. That's going to work. And I'm going to go ahead and crank up the speed a little bit because I don't need slow speed. And we're going to go ahead and take our center punch. Now you don't have to use a center punch. You can use an awl, it worked just fine. I mainly bought this for metal, but it works perfectly good for plastic. And let's go ahead and drill our holes. All right, there we go. Now let's go ahead and Change the slope of speed down on our drill. The drill has two separate speeds. Go ahead and fit this big monster in here. And let's just take our time and go slow. And you can see how fast it goes through there. They're extremely fast. Ah! Boy, that sucker really wants to go through. Let's go ahead and finish this hole first. Sucker goes through plastic fast, doesn't it? Ah! Almost too fast. Go ahead and tighten that back down on there. All right. Ah, come on now. Well, that sucker's powerful, isn't it? like that should do it and we'll go ahead and clean off the shavings and uh, get these extra little plastic pieces out of here. Go ahead and peel the tape off since we're kind of pretty much done with the tape. Let's uh, see how we did here. Let me clean these holes up just a little bit. We'll find out because that bit's powerful, as you guys can see. And uh, perfect fit. Perfect fit. All right, let's go ahead and uh, put this on here, and we'll go ahead and uh, thread it down. Just kind of line it up and you tighten the, the nut down. Now don't make it super tight because it'll compress it. So you just kind of just get on to get it snug. That's pretty good. And you want to go ahead and line your switches up. And uh, that looks pretty good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, we're going to do the wiring next, but what we'll do is let's go ahead and put everything back together. So let's go ahead and put our little door back on, and let's go ahead and snap the handle back on.
like that. And uh, let's go ahead and see if our our speakers fit. So let me go ahead and see who's knocking at my door. Be just a second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, sorry about that. I actually uh, got another package from Amazon. And it's a uh, lithium battery, as you can see right there. So that's for a project that I'm actually doing next week that you guys will get to see. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the speakers out of the package real quick. And I guess we'll do a unboxing. Let's go ahead and clean this mess up just a little bit and try to get back in the habit of putting my tools back where I got them. So I'm going to put the knife back in there, tape measure there. You know, this plastic. I hope you guys are enjoying this, uh, watching me do step by step. So please give me some feedback and uh, let me know. Put my big drill bit back in there. And uh, let's go ahead and take these speakers out of the package and see what we got. And uh, sometimes they're all. Now, the biggest thing is when you take these out of the package, don't lose the screws. I, I actually lost the screws. Now you do get some information right here that comes with it. It's in different languages. And it just kind of tells you about your speakers and you know different things like that. Safety instructions, uh, proper installation, blah blah blah. But we don't need that. Rail men don't need instruction. Just kidding, we need a lot of instruction. Alright, there's one. Now, some of the times these come with speaker wires. Uh, I know the kickers do. Uh, unfortunately, these don't. So, now let me tell you guys a little trick here. Um, don't throw away these boxes just yet. Number one, you've got the template. But number two, if you want to paint your speaker grills, these are a perfect place to mount your speaker grills so you can paint them. So, kind of keep those boxes around. So let's go ahead and I'm trying to hurry, but I don't want this video to be too long. I'm trying to do it in two parts. So I gotta keep it under an hour. Okay, there's our there's our little package of screws. We're gonna put those aside for just a minute. And we're gonna go ahead and take the speakers out of the plastic. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw all the packaging away because we're not gonna need that. Now here's another little tip for you guys. Now if you guys are doing your especially your metal boxes and you're just fitting your speakers, after you fit your speakers, you, you want to go ahead and put them back in the boxes and that way nothing happens to your speakers while you're fitting them. So let's go ahead and take these babies out. Now again, the JVCs do not come with wire, so you have to get your own speaker wire. Um, 18 gauge will work. I, re I recommend 16 gauge. That's what I use. And it works really, really well. And uh, these are beautiful. Six and a half inch JVCs. We're going to go ahead and set one to the side. And let's go ahead and put our towel down again so we don't scratch the surface. Because again, even though this is plastic, I've had metal up here. It's kind of a rough surface. And uh, we'll go ahead and put this down. And let's see how they do. Matter of fact, we can go ahead and put these in if you'd like. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Perfect fit. Perfect fit. And you see they, they move up and down side to side a little bit. So kind of line them up just like that. Now what I do before I put my speakers in. Damn, those look good. Sorry. <laughs> is go ahead and put the wires on because the wire connectors... Are on the bottom and it's kind of difficult to get to them so we can go ahead and lay them right here on this towel and what you're going to need to order if you don't have any already are you can go down to the hardware at the auto parts store and get these are these uh female blade connectors sometimes they're called f connectors and we're gonna need four for right now so we're just going to get four but you're also going to need these for your switches and other things and the way these go on is you crimp them. And there's different ways you can crimp them. Let me open my box right here real quick to show you guys. Oh, we forgot one thing. Goodness gracious. Can't do the speakers just yet. 
but uh, you can get these little cheap crimp tools like this and they work really well but I go ahead and use the big crimpers just like that all right ladies and gentlemen we did forget one step and I tend to forget this step I forget I don't know how I do but I'm gonna go ahead and take the blade out of here we're done with the jigsaw is let me get the cooler back out here let me put this back these over here for right now put this up I'm trying to stay organized we got to have a way to charge the battery so what we're going to do is now you can do it one of two ways it's perfectly fine to open the box and go ahead and stick your charger down in there and charge the box it's perfectly fine or what we're going to do here is we're going to use these little connectors right here let me show it to you I don't know if you can see that in the camera and it's got a little connection right there female connection and that's what our charger is going to plug into and it's got a little nut that holds it on and we're going to drill it right there so let me go ahead and uh, get ready to do that but before we do that we're going to, it's going to be kind of interesting the way we do this because we're going to have to make the hole in the bottom wider than the hole this is going to be going into. So we're probably going to use one of our paddle bits or we might probably going to use a hole saw. So let me find my hole saws real quick. So I tell you what, this is probably a good stopping point right here. Uh, for part one of the video, uh, we got the major components just about installed. The switches are installed and all that. And we still need to vacuum out the inside of the box once we drill this hole. But we're going to do that in the second video. So that's going to be coming up in part two. So in part two, we're going to mount the speakers, hook them up to the wires. We're going to go ahead and put the amplifier inside and the battery, secure everything. But we're going to save all that for part two. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, new videos every week. Um, part two of this video will be up in about 24 to 48 hours. So this is Saturday morning. I'm hoping to have part two up by Sunday night. So thank you guys so much for watching my videos. And thank you for subscribing to my channel. I've got new subscribers almost every week. Thank you guys so much, and please give me some positive feedback if you like what you see. If you don't like what you see, uh, tell, me, tell me what to do differently. But uh, I think it's coming out pretty good so far, and again, uh, this is going to be your first project. I, I think you're going to do really well on it. This is a fun project to do, and you'll impress your friends and your family. And it's great for backyard barbecues by the pool, because again, this is going to be waterproof when we get it done. Everything's going to be hidden under this compartment. And the speakers are waterproof, and it's, it's portable. It's going to be very light with a lithium-ion battery. And it's going to work really, really good. And in part two, I'll show you guys that connector that you can use under here to hook it up to a regular battery charger. Or you can actually put it on the outside because it is waterproof for you guys that want to use lead-acid batteries. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.